Well, uh, this is gonna piss a lot of people off. Really? Alright, what's guys, my name is Rero, and welcome back to another video. And yes, today I'm gonna be picking out the best Barcelona slash Real Madrid players that I have played during this international break period, kinda. What? Because as you all know, we are gonna go into another international break, and this is like the third time now. And I usually I look forward to this because, you know, I'm from Peru, but since Peru is playing so shit, I'm not looking forward to it anymore. And I kinda just enjoy watching Barcelona play more than Peru, to be honest. Despite the loss against Real Sociedad, I still like watching them so yeah it's gonna be a long two weeks but you know what it gives them time to regroup and just rethink their whole strategy because that game against the Real Sociedad was a fucking disgrace so but anyway back onto the video as I've said before I'm gonna go through each position and I'm just gonna be picking out which player of the two teams was better in that position nice so during this period Real Madrid played Celta Vigo Dortmund obviously Barcelona uh, they played against Milan and then they played against Osasuna so they played six games throughout this period that we can like determine if they were good or not. Now for Barcelona, they played against Sevilla, Bayern, Real Madrid, Espanyol, that team from Serbia and obviously they played Real Sociedad yesterday. Uh, we won five of those matches but lost the one against Real Sociedad which still hurts but we moved. But yeah, these six matches from each team will determine which players were better. And I'm gonna piss off a lot of people, uh, that's for sure, uh, especially Real Madrid fans. Nah, I never knew that. Because I think you all have an idea of what the team is gonna be like. So yeah, let's begin, I guess. So yeah, in goal, I think it's pretty obvious. We're gonna go for Andre Lunin. Uh, it's, it really is no competition here. It's either him or Iñaki Peña. <laughs> At right back, it, I think it's also a pretty obvious pick. Uh, we're gonna go for Kunde. It's either between Kunde or Lucas Vasquez. There is no competition there. Now our two center backs. This might be where we finally see some people want to argue with me, but I think this is also no competition because uh, let's be honest here, Real Madrid's defense in this period is, has just been shit. They've been absolutely terrible, hence why they lost the two matches. When you see their defense on paper, it just it looks like a bunch of elite players, you know? You got Eda Militao, Rudiger, Mendy, well, Vasquez, I, I guess, but, but they've just been playing so poorly, bro. Meanwhile, while Barcelona's defense executes their high line to perfection, so... So because of that, I'm actually gonna make a pretty controversial decision here. I'm gonna put Inigo Martinez and Pau Kubasi instead of uh, Rudiger and Militao. No, 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 let, let me explain myself. I know some of y'all will say, Oh, Barrero, what the fuck are you doing? Let me just quickly explain why I chose those two instead of Eda Militao and Rudiger. Now, Rudiger has been playing badly for a couple of matches now. Against AC Milan, he obviously had that stinker where he just did not mark that guy in the from the corner and they just conceded. Then against Atletico Madrid, he was obviously the last player who tried to push up, but then he got caught up high instead. So Correa just pretty much had to like, you know, had a 1v1 against Courtois. That was Rudiger's fault you can't deny me that against Barcelona he did literally didn't do anything I mean Lewandowski cooked him so hard and my man is like 37 he's literally an old man and Rudiger could not handle Lewandowski well it's just, it's just been terrible same with Adam Militao and now Adam Militao obviously got his ACL which I just feel very sorry for because he did get an ACL before on his other leg I think it was on his left leg but now it's on his right leg so you heard of a double UCL but Real Madrid are also a fan of the double ACL <laughs> Anyway, Inigo Martinez and Kubasi have just been elite in every of these six matches. They've just been unstoppable with their high line, which is just so weird to see because these are the backup center backs for Barcelona. If Christensen and Araujo were healthy, they would be playing instead. But instead, you got these two somehow to just develop a fucking elite partnership. And it's kind of hilarious to see because Kubasi is obviously 17. I mean, literally, their age gap is 16. It's literally the age gap of Kubasi's age. So I, I, I don't know how this happened, but well, it is what it is. They've just been amazing, and I generally did not expect this at the start of the season, to be honest, so... I mean, these two made Mbappe be offside eight times in the first half, and they just made Mbappe look like an absolute clown, a clueless fool. They, they made Mbappe look like a joke. You're goddamn right. Anyway, at left back, again, it should be pretty, should be pretty obvious who I'm gonna pick here. It's not gonna be Mendy, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be Balde. Huh? Who would've thought? Not me. Realistically, during this season, who has been better? It's Balde, every day of the week. Alrighty, on to the midfield. I'm gonna once again put in controversial picks, because that's apparently what I'm doing today. 
Yeah, I'm surprised as you are. I did not expect this guy to be so good when he first started. When Mark Bernal got injured, I thought, holy shit, we're fucked. Because, because realistically, I thought Mark Bernal was gonna be our new Busquets. But uh, he got injured, obviously, he got his ACL torn. So I thought that we might actually go ahead and just make an emergency signing, if that was even possible. But Hansi Flick decided to instead use Mark Casado. And my god, this guy is insane. Like, Jesus Christ, I have never seen someone like him in a long time. He's like a... He's like a Gavi at CDM. His stamina is practically endless. And as you've seen from the game against Bayern, Real Madrid, and so and so, he has that passing ability. He can play those long balls. He can play those through balls. And, well, he's just been amazing, honestly. In my opinion, he's been way better than Bellingham. I'm not saying Bellingham is a bad player, but he's just been very underwhelming this season. I know he scored a goal in a game against Russell Ciudad, but that's one game out of the five, out of the six where he was where he was pretty good. He's been good, but he's not been as good as you know, as you and we all expect him to be. He's, a, he's supposed to be a, one of the best players in the world, but due to this new system and due to Mbappe's arrival, he hasn't been able to showcase that ability. So it's not really his fault, but it's more Ancelotti's fault and just Mbappe's arrival. So again, I'm not saying he's a bad player, it's just that during this period and just this season overall, he's been pretty much held back from showcasing his own abilities due to Mbappe being there and Mbappe taking his position. So yeah, Marcus Sado and the next player that I'm gonna pick have been way better as a midfielder compared to Bellingham. I've got nothing against Bellingham but I'm just saying that he's been poorer than Casado and next player I'm gonna be talking about all right next player that you probably saw coming because I don't think was I don't think I was being that discreet uh, it's Pedri Home. Pedri, in my opinion, has been the best midfielder in the world. I know some of you will claw me for saying that, but I really cannot think of anyone else that has been as good as he has as a double pivot, uh, especially when he's with Marc Casado. But uh, yeah, my man has just been amazing for me. He's just been really, really well for um, my team. And uh, But again, he just has that IQ, that um, that passing ability, that dribbling in tight spaces that just that makes him kind of look like Iniesta. Like, there's a reason why people call him the next Iniesta or the next Xavi, because he literally plays like them and as you all know those two were arguably the best midfielders in history so the fact that his play style resembles theirs is just shows you how, to, how much of an amazing player he is now i know he had a poor game against russell see that i know he had a poor game against um serena's fest oh god damn i hate their fucking name but you can't really argue against me that uh, he played amazingly against Real Madrid. He played amazingly against Espanyol, Bayern, and Sevilla. Him and Casado just made that midfield of Tushimeni, Camavinga, Bellingham, and Valverde their bitch. He's out of line, but he's right. I know some of you will say that, oh, Valverde should be in here. And I do admit that while Valverde may be the best midfielder in the world when he's in form, uh, during this six game period, he was not in form. So in my opinion, Pedri and Casado were much better than him. So that's why I put them both in there. And again, I'm not saying that Valverde is not a good player. In my eyes, the best midfielder when he's, you know, playing well. I mean, during the first six matches for Real Madrid, he was probably the one that was carrying them. <laughs> he was that good. I wouldn't be surprised if he like improved his performances next in the next period but for now I think Casado and Pedri were just better in the midfield anyway at the right wing position I don't think this should really shock anyone I don't <laughs> there's no competition here as well it's he's been by far one of the best players in the world and that's uh, Lamine Yamal and his absence was pretty noticeable when he was not playing against Russell Ciudad that game literally made it more obvious that Barcelona really rely on this kid I mean it's ridiculous just how much we rely on, on Lamine Yamal and that game just made it more noticeable because when he was gone I mean Lamine Yamal has one of the best crosses in the world and he's only 17 years old it's one of the best dribblers in the world he's only 17 years old he's probably the closest thing we have to Messi at his age and wow it's just it's really amazing to see a player like that in my club he's, just, he's one of the best players in the world at 17 again I mean Jesus Christ Anyway, next player that I want to put in is obviously Rafinha. Yes, Rafinha, one of the most informed players in the world right now. Everything about him has just been insane this season. You can't really argue against me when I say that because let's be honest here. He, had the, he has the goals to back it up. He has assists to back it up. He has 12 goals and 10 assists this season. One of the three players that actually can say that they have, you know, 10 goals and assists. He's just been amazing this season. There's no argument against that. Now my first striker is gonna be obviously one of the best players in the world, one of the best Brazilians in the world, aside from Rafinha, and uh, that's obviously gonna be Vinicius. Wow, man. Uh... 
Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I know you may say, but Rero, that's not Vinicius Jr. What, what, the, wait, what's going on? I'm poor, okay? I cannot afford Vinicius Jr. I cannot buy Vinicius Jr., nor do I have his loans. So this is what you're gonna get. To be honest, this guy is pretty, uh, pretty much like Vinicius Jr. I mean, he's, he has Vinicius in his name. He's Brazilian. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's black. And lastly, the last player that makes it into this team, it really shouldn't be a debate because the other player that's supposed to be a candidate hasn't done jack shit. And uh, it's obviously gonna be Lewandowski. I mean, the guy's got 14 goals and Papa's got six goals. Do I really need to explain myself for this one? No. Anyway, this is my combined Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona 11. It's, well, I think it's pretty obvious that this was going to happen. I pre I'm sure it was obvious to most of you that this was going to be the place I was going to pick. Because Real Madrid has been just been very poor this season. If you see them play, they struggled. And that's partly due to Ancelotti and Mbappe's arrival. So, yeah, all of them have been, have been way poorer than last season. But yeah, Barcelona has been obviously better. And they showed that when they demolished Real Madrid 4-0 at the fucking Santiago. So, so yeah, let's uh, let's the waffling and let's get into the first game, I suppose. Let's do this. All right, let's go. It's it's gonna go. It's gonna go so wrong. I've I've got players out of position. I'm literally playing a B Tech Vinicius, and uh, well, we're we'll literally have to rely on Rafinha. Oh my God, it's Vinicius on the ball. <laughs> Vinicius is on the ball. Can we even win this with this? with this team i mean div three so this is that doesn't make this easier for sure and i don't want to risk champs because you only get five matches on that as you all know I must have play oh, oh actually oh, i'm through 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 oh my how the fuck is stan we catching up to rafinha i don't know jeff Nah, oh, fuck me, bro. Ah, oh, God, Bon Matty. Jesus Christ. A few moments later. Oh, fucking hell. No! Alrighty, well, we've been completely. Uh, we've been cooked. We've been cooked. So let's change things up, I guess. Oh, good. And play a three ball here. And he should score this. There we go. Nice goal from Lewandowski. That's what I'm looking for here. It's a nice, simple cross. And Lewandowski scores nicely. This, guy's, this, this guy doesn't even control his own defenders. There we go. Rafinha. Nice. Finally, we get the, we get the equalizer. Yeah! Holy shit. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope, you, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys don't disagree with my opinion too much. Again, this is just my opinion of who the best players between Barcelona and Real Madrid have been. And the reason why I chose Real Madrid is because A, there are rivals and B, they're probably the only contenders apart from us that can win La Liga. Atletico Madrid is, is just not consistent and uh, well, they're already pretty far behind so I don't see them catching up. Whereas Real Madrid are only three points behind us. So, so yeah, that's kind of just why I wanted to make this video. I'll probably make the same video again after the next period. Hopefully it stays like this for Barcelona because we don't want Real Madrid to catch up to us. But you never know, honestly. With Real Madrid, it's so unexpected. They can have peers with their shit, but they still win. And well, yeah, it, it is what it is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching again. And hope you'll have a good day. Peace.